My instant recommendation was 2,450 calories and then modify it accordingly. If he's losing more than 2.45 pounds per week, then he needs to increase his calories a little bit more because he's losing weight too rapidly and it's going to cause a rebound effect. He's gonna end up binging and putting all the weight back on. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Steven here with Team Euphoric, and today I'm gonna to be explaining to you why things like MyFitnessPal and other online TDEE calculators are completely inaccurate and should not be trusted. I'm also going to be teaching you how to determine exactly how many calories do you need. The reason that I'm making this video is because a few days ago, a friend of mine from elementary school had reached out to me inquiring about losing weight. He wanted to know how many calories he should be consuming and what type of foods he should be eating. So he told me that he was eating anywhere between 1,500 to 1,600 calories per day. His breakfast was very, very small, and overall he just did not consume that much. So I asked him how exactly he came to these numbers, what exactly he was consuming, and this is what he said. First, I ended up saying to him, your breakfast or lunch should be your largest meal and your dinner should be your smallest. 1500 is very low. How much do you weigh? And he responded 245 pounds. My fitness pal says 1760 calories per day. Now this is incredibly low for somebody who weighs 245 pounds. And one of the problems is a lot of people when they try to lose weight, they will tend to drastically cut their calories because they want to lose weight as quickly as possible. What happens is when you decrease your calories by a significant amount, you're going to end up decreasing your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate, which is the amount of calories that your body burns at rest throughout the day. And you're also going to decrease your neat calories or your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Those are all the little micro movements that you do throughout the day that don't count as exercise, but are still movement and still burn calories. Things like brushing your teeth, waving your hands around, walking around, all those types of activities. Now, another thing with when you end up decreasing your calories substantially is you are going to have increased levels of the hormone ghrelin. If you recall, ghrelin is your hunger hormone and when it's elevated, it is going to cause you to crave high calorie dense foods and it's also going to lead to poor decision making as increased levels of ghrelin have been linked to poor decision making. So you're gonna be much more likely to go out and do something like binge on some foods. Now, in terms of avoiding this, one of the things that you wanna do is determine how how many calories do you actually need? And you wanna get into a very specific window to make sure that you're not cutting your calories by too much. In order to determine how many calories that you need, I'm gonna be teaching you two different methods. This first one, it's gonna be a little bit more time consuming, it requires a little bit more effort, more time, and it's gonna be a little bit more math involved. Whereas the second method, it's much easier, it's pretty much idiot proof. So if you wanna skip ahead to that one, the timestamp is gonna be in the description section and you can skip ahead. But with regard to this first method, the very first things you wanna do when determining how many calories do you need is you wanna determine your TDEE, which is your total daily energy expenditure, which is the total amount of calories that you burn throughout the day. In order to determine your TDEE, there's going to be no way to determine it for 100% accuracy. There's going to be some trial and error involved, but one of the ways that you can determine it, if you are a very sedentary individual, just multiply your body weight by 12 to 14, and that'll give you an estimate of your total daily energy expenditure. If you're moderately active, you're going to multiply your body weight by 14 to 16, and that's going to give you a rough estimate. And then lastly, if you're very active, you are going to multiply your body weight by 16 to 18 and that will give you the total calories that you need to be at maintenance now one of the things worth noting is this is going to be your body weight in pounds if you are weighing yourself in kilograms you're going to have to do a little bit of conversion but your body weight in pounds times those numbers will give you an estimate remember this is an estimate it's not guaranteed of your total daily energy expenditure once you have determined your total daily energy expenditure, the next thing that you wanna do is determine your goal. Is it your goal to lose weight, maintain your weight, or is it your goal to, to gain some weight? Because at the end of the day, it's going to come down to calories in versus calories out. There's absolutely no way around that. If you're in a caloric deficit, you're gonna lose weight. If you're in a caloric surplus, you're going to gain weight. And if the amount of calories that you take in is equal to that of your total daily energy expenditure, then your weight is going to stay exactly the same. So you wanna weigh yourself on a regular basis for a few days just to determine what your weight is. And then then you want to multiply it by those numbers. Once you determine your goal, stick to those maintenance calories. If you find that your weight is continually increasing, then you haven't really found your maintenance calories. You're actually in a surplus, you're gonna to want to decrease it. If you find that your weight is continually decreasing, then once again, you are not at your maintenance calories, you're actually in a caloric deficit, so you're gonna to want to increase it. Once you find that your weight is consistently staying the same over the period of one or two weeks, then that, you have, congratulations, you found your maintenance calories. Now you can actually start to determine how many calories do you need to cut back on or add in depending on your goal. Now, with regard to this right over here, one of the things that's going to be very important to note is that there are roughly 
roughly 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. So if you wanna lose one pound of fat per week, you are going to have to be in a 3,500 calorie deficit over the course of one week. 3,500, you divide that by seven days in a week, that's gonna give you a 500 calorie deficit per day. But that is how you determine how many calories you actually need. Now, one of the things when you are actually determining how much of a deficit or how much of a surplus you should be in, if it is your goal to be in a caloric, if it is your goal to lose weight, then you need to be in a caloric deficit. And what exactly is a good deficit to be in? Well, this is going to depend on several factors. It's going to depend on your genetics. Some people, they are not gonna be able to tolerate very large deficits. Another thing is it's gonna determine your starting body weight. Generally, the higher your body weight, the more of a deficit you can be in. But one of the things that you could do is anywhere from 0.5% to 1% of your total body weight lost in fat every single week. That is going to be a reasonable and sustainable amount to lose. So if you want to lose weight, you should be aiming for that 0.5% to 1%. So if you are a... 200 pound individual, you should be losing anywhere from one to two pounds of fat every single week because 0.5% to 1% of 200 pounds is one to two pounds. Now, once we've actually determined all of that, the next thing is to actually determine our caloric requirements. So I'm gonna use the example of my friend. My friend weighs 245 pounds. So 245 pounds times 12 to 14, because he's a sedentary individual, equals 2,940 to 3,430 calories. That is his maintenance, or at least that's going to be an estimate of what his maintenance are. So he can do that for a week or two, measure his weight on a regular basis, and if he finds that by consuming around 3,000 calories, which is right in that window, if he is able to maintain his weight on 3,000 calories over the course of a couple weeks, then he knows that he's at his maintenance calories. The next step is to actually determine his deficit. With regard to the deficit, we know that 0.5% to 1% is going to be very sustainable in the long run, and it's not going to cause things like ghrelin to elevate and things like going out on binges. So 0.5% to 1% of 245 pounds is going to be 1.225 pounds to 2.45 pounds. So that is how much weight he should be be losing in the beginning. If he's losing more than 2.45 pounds, then it's not going to be sustainable long term. Chances are he's going to go out on a binge and he's going to backtrack and end up losing the progress that he made. So ideally for this individual, 1.225 pounds to 2.45 pounds of fat every single week is what he can expect to lose and make it sustainable. Now that we know that that is the actual goal of how much weight to lose, how much of a deficit will that equate to? Well, 1.225 times 3,500, which is the amount of calories in one pound of fat, is going to be equal to 4,287.5 calories. So 4,287.5 calories over the course of seven days. If you divide that by seven, that is going to give us 612.5 calories. So he should be in a deficit of 612.5 calories per day on the low end. On the high end, and if he is somebody who is able to tolerate it, then 2.45 pounds of fat, you multiply that by 3,500 calories, that's going to give us 8,575 calories. That is going to be the calorie requirements to end up burning 2.45 pounds of fat per week. Now, if we divide that 8,575 divided by seven, which is the number of days in a week, then that will give us 1,225 calorie deficit every single day. Now, in terms of the calorie requirements, we know that the actual caloric the maintenance calories was roughly around 3,000, assuming that 3,000 he was able to maintain his weight. So 3,000 minus 612.5 and 3,000 minus 1,225 is going to give us a caloric requirement of anywhere from 1,775 calories to 2,387.5 calories. So he would continue to do that. If he finds that 2,387.5 calories is pretty easy, he's able to do it fairly without any real difficulty, then he can start to lower it more and more. If he gets down to 1,775 and he finds that it's too difficult, that he's constantly hungry, he's craving a lot of food, he's binging at night, then that's too big of a deficit, he needs to go up a little bit. But generally, that 1,775 to 2,387.5 should be the target for this specific individual. Again, this is a 245 pound individual who's is fairly sedentary. If you are somebody who's 150 pounds, then yeah, that might be too much. But for this individual, that would be an appropriate amount. That is the little bit more difficult way. 
If you want to determine your caloric requirements the easy way, this one is pretty much idiot proof. All you need to do is multiply your body weight by 10. That is going to give you a rough estimate. So what you do, let's say you're 150 pounds, 150 times 10 is 1,500 calories. So 1,500 calories should be your target. If you find that on 1,500 calories, you're very, very hungry, you're binging at night, then bump it up a little bit. If you find that with 1,500 calories, you're satiated and you're not really craving any foods, then that's good. Keep it up. In terms of another way that you could use this, let's say you multiply your body weight by, by 10, that gives us 1500 calories. A 150 pound individual should be losing anywhere from 0.75 pounds to 1.5 pounds of fat every single week. So if you're 150 pounds, you multiply your weight by 10, and then you're losing more than 1.5 pounds of fat every single week, that's too high of a deficit. You need to decrease the deficit a little bit more, add your calories a little bit more. For this individual right over here, because he's 245 pounds, my instant recommendation was 2,450 calories and then modify it accordingly. If he's losing more than 2.45 pounds per week, then he needs to increase his calories a little bit more because he's losing weight too rapidly and it's going to cause a rebound effect. He's gonna end up binging and putting all the weight back on. But those are just a couple of the ways that you can actually determine what exactly your caloric requirements are going to be. And if you guys have any other questions with regard to determining your calorie requirements or anything like that, go ahead and ask them down in the comment section because I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. But that's pretty much it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so I know to make more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you again tomorrow.